Hi, I'm DC publisher Jim Lee. Hey everyone, I'm Journey Smollett, aka Black Canary from Birds of Prey. Catch me on today's DC Daily for their 400th episode. Congrats everyone. Mwah. Hello everyone and welcome to a milestone episode of DC Daily. I'm Clark Wolf and today we are celebrating 400 episodes. No! Yay! 400! It's insanity. This is incredible insanity. And here with me to celebrate in my own version of the Saturday Night Seder are Hector Navarro, Amy Dallin, Sam Humphreys, Whitney Moore, Sam Levine, and Hi. Tiffany Smith. Hi y'all! Hey everybody! Hi Clark, hi Amy, hi Tiffany, hi Hector, hi Whitney, hi Sam. Hi, hi, oh, hi, 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 <laughs> we are officially the Daily Bunch, and I am so glad the band's back to celebrate because this is a big one. Today, we are welcoming the one and only Jim Lee to the show. Yo. <laughs> oh, my God. And Black Canary herself, Journey Smollett. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. And just to add a little bit of salt, we also invited Trivia King Alex Jaffe into the mix. Oh, oh what? No. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, he's he's definitely the worst, but that's why we love him. Uh, but Amy and Sam, you're about to talk with Jim Lee. Yeah. Yes. This is so cool. He is the, the CCO, he's the publisher, and he's one of our greatest living artists. And he's doing something incredibly cool right now for comic shops everywhere. So I might cry. Who knows? Ah! <laughs> well, we can't wait to watch. So we're going to turn off our videos and lurk from behind closed doors. So take it away, guys. All right, everyone, it is our great pleasure to welcome to the show DC Chief Creative Officer and Publisher, Jim Lee. Thank you so much yeah, for Yeah, bro. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. This is a cool. I know we've all been thinking a lot and been very concerned about the, the sectors of our industry that's been hit hard. You have turned that into action. Tell us about what you've been doing for charity. So I came up with this crazy idea, like I could do something where uh, I'm raise money for stores that are closed, right? That that are being hit hard by this pandemic. And uh, I was trying to do something that'd be meaningful that would raise, you know, uh, you know, a certain amount of money. And so I came up with this idea of drawing 60 sketches over 60 days. And um, but now that I'm only 15 of 60 now, 25% of the way in, I'm like, I should really should have done 20 for 20. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I should have accounted for being older. Uh, it certainly didn't get wiser, but um, so the idea was I'd convince myself, well, these will just be tiny little headshots and they'll take me, you know, 15 minutes to an hour at the most. The first one was Nightwing and that was relatively quick. Like I said, it probably maybe took like two hours at the most. And then for some reason, something happened and I started putting more effort into it. I couldn't help myself. I don't know what was going on. And I started putting more time and, and before I knew it, I'm, I'm like putting in like six, seven hours. I'm like working till three, four in the morning on these pieces. And I and I do wonder like what the what the hell's going on? Like what is going on? And and I have to think there's a couple things because one, maybe it's because there's people watching, right, on social media and, and so you wanna, you know, do your best, impress them or whatever. But I've streamed artwork before, I've drawn in front of crowds. So that can't be all of it. And, and I, I do think there's something subconscious about this and that I'm just really angry. And I and I think um a lot of us are in that we're in this situation, right? That we didn't create and we didn't ask for certainly, and and uh, it changed our you know entire way, you know, of living and working and our family and this sort of you know imminent threat that kind of exists on the horizon for a lot of us. You know, you can't see it, but you feel it. You know, and 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 it's with you throughout the day, and it's something that that uh, makes us anxious and and concerned, and and so it just. I think it makes me angry and in a way I'm sort of sublimating that that anger into the art. I mean it sounds like it sounds like the art has been therapeutic for you going through all this. Absolutely. There's something yeah. there is something that is happening uh, because I don't mind working hard and feeling the pain of working hard and working every day because I know stores are out there uh, suffering, you know, they've had to lay off their employees or they are struggling to figure out how they're going to make, you know, pay their bills for this month when they've got no new, you know, comic book content coming in, uh, no new customers. I mean it's it's a crazy time. Jim, um, I have to say a, yeah. a big personal thank you as one of the many, many comic book store employees out there. What you're doing means so much to us. 
uh, and the things that we all share and love. And we really, really appreciate it. No, th thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. Uh, and I'll tell you that it uh, the the reception and the comments from the fans, uh, it does give me encouragement. It is kind of driving me on because there is a point where I go, well, I could just slow up a little. I can, I can take my foot off the accelerator a little bit. But but uh, when they're like going, this is the best one yet online, I'm like, oh God, now I can't let them down. I gotta, <laughs> the next one has to be the best one. How am I gonna do that? And it's insane. And uh, so even my wife is like going, what are you doing? What's, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> okay, like, but you keep telling best. us about yeah. the beautiful art. Can we see any? Yeah, Do you yeah. have anything to show us? Yeah, I brought some pieces here with me. Um, so this is the Batman who laughs. And I'll tell you, like, I thought immediately people would go to Batman, the Joker, Superman. But it's really interesting because I let the people that win the auctions decide what the next uh, sketch is going to be. And it's been really interesting to see what they come up with. And it's almost like a, a challenge. And that's part of it, too. Like, a lot of these characters I've ever drawn before. Batman who laughs, I have. But, like, Batman, Red Rain... Ooh, I love that one. That classic Kelly Jones look. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted, so I was like, yes. Googling Kelly Jones work, and I was kind of going back to, it was very nostalgic for me going back and looking at uh, the images online. And I remember my days of fandom as a reader and uh, what I loved about the stuff. And it was just kind of having fun retracing your steps. And, and I've never drawn Batman like this, obviously, before. And then here's a, a Dr. Fate. I love oh, that Dr. On. Fate one. I was so grateful for whoever suggested that. It looks so good. And then this one is a, a Batman Beyond, sort of the Arkham Knight from the video game. So it's an interesting mix of characters. The fun of it is I don't know what they're going to give me. And so it's almost like one of those cooking challenge TV shows where they give you the ingredients and then you've got like X number of hours and you got to get it up and out the next day. Jim, you've done so many characters are already all as you just showed us and like Big Barda. What has been your favorite to draw so far? Uh, it's surprisingly been a dead man. I wanted to homage a, a certain Neil Adams cover, uh, but I didn't want to replicate it exactly. So I used that as inspiration and created this kind of haunted image. I was channeling a little bit of Mike Mignola because he, he did some amazing dead man covers. Jim, I know like this is like the whole situation, the circumstances this is all unexpected, but do you think like that this has brought some of your best work out of you? According to fans, I, I spent 30 some odd years doing crap and, and finally, I've, I've hit some potential <laughs> that they go, yeah, finally, that he's done something I like. And like, that's fine. I'll take it. I don't care. I'll, I'll take it. But yeah, I think, yeah, I, look, I, I think it's a different type of project. There's a challenge piece of it. There's a social piece of it. There's the a therapeutic, you know, uh, charity, you know, fundraising aspect to it. And, um, and uh, I, I think to keep myself going, I do have to continue to challenge myself in terms of technique. Like, I've got 45 more of these to go, 75%. I just can't continue to do the same toothbrush splatter, right? Okay, so I'd love to hear more about the charity element of this because in addition to your enormous project, DC is doing a direct donation. And can you tell us a little bit about the fund that all of this is going to? Yeah, yeah, so I'm super excited to share. Uh, so first and foremost, we knew that we were going to raise some money to help the stores that were closed or struggling. And uh, we needed to find a partner that was already set up, um, you know, as a, a 501c or, you know, a, a nonprofit charitable organization, something that specialized in the book market. And uh, I had actually reached out to Convo Legal Defense Fund and Charles Brownstein had recommended Bink. And I had never heard about it before. But once I started Googling and doing some research, I realized they were the perfect partner. They had already set up a page. In fact, they already had a fund that serviced comic book shops. So we started communicating with David and Bink. And uh, rather than duplicate efforts and have two different funds doing the same thing, we decided to basically create, sort of unite and create one fund. We're calling it the Comic Book United Fund. DC contributed 250000 I'm going to contribute all the net proceeds um, to uh, of my uh, 60 sketches to this fund, the Comic Book United Fund. And then a lot of other artists uh, out of the blue just are contacting me and saying, hey, this is really cool. Can I participate? Can I, you know, be part of this? Like Art Adams and Jeff Scott Campbell and yes. Walt Simonson, Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz. So I've got I've got a different artist lined up for every day. And uh, I'm super excited because uh, it's, it's something I kind of hope for that people would go out and, and also start, you know, organizing and fundraising. But I didn't know they would necessarily want to do it with me because uh, I kind of created this crazy situation, but it's been really heartening to see across the industry, all the creators stepping up and doing their part and auctioning off jackets and scripts and photos and memorabilia and comics. Uh, and I, I really think as a cumulative whole, it's gonna raise a tremendous amount of money and, and really, really uh, help the stores out in, in, in a big, big way. 
All right, Jim, thank you so much again for Dude, joining us thank today. thank you for being here. This is awesome. This is amazing, and congratulations, guys. 400 episodes. I, thank you. I, I remember helping you guys with the launch, and it felt like six months ago, I but I know it was a lot longer. And, you know, you guys have put in so much work and creativity into this and really made it a super success. So congratulations. Thank you, man. And, and thank you for celebrating with us. We appreciate it. Now we need you to draw so many more pictures, so we'll <laughs> yeah. let you go. Yes. <laughs> But if you at home have not read Batman Hush or Detective a Thousand, they are both on the service, so you should absolutely check them out. Thank you again for joining us, and now we're gonna go check in with Whitney and Tiffany. Gang, we're here with Birds of Prey's Dinah Lance, AKA Black Canary, the lovely Journey Smollett. Welcome to the show, Journey. Thank you so much, ladies. Thanks for having me. How have you been holding up at home? Have you gotten to any, like, any interesting hobbies or activities? What you been up to? Girl, listen, I, I've tried to get into all of the things. Um, started picking up the guitar. I'm trying to learn So Far Away by Carole King because it seems quite appropriate. Basically, what I'm hearing is that when we see Black Canary again, there might be guitar in hand also. <laughs> yeah, electric guitar, I hope. <laughs> Well, birds of a feather flock together, like my segue, and we loved you in Birds of Prey. We actually did a Twitter watch along a couple weeks back, and oh my God, the Black Canary love was so real. Everybody was just lighting up the Twitter feed about it. What was your favorite thing about playing her? Oh my gosh. I mean, I love playing Black Canary so much. You know, I was, I was forced to do things I'd never done before, like martial arts, to try to do justice to one of the fiercest martial arts in the DC universe. It was quite a, a task for me to take on, but I loved it, man. I loved it. It pushed me beyond certain physical limits I, I thought I had. You know, I had had my son like a year and a half prior to his training, and so didn't feel strong, didn't feel confident, you know, had that like postpartum, like, oh, my body doesn't look that great kind of thing. And, you know, it was just such an opportunity to, to just walk away feeling incredibly strong. You knocked it out of the park, babe. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm like, I can say from watching, first of all, I totally wore my like gold shorts today to try and like, yeah, a little bit of those gold pants. <laughs> um, you looked so fierce in the movie. And I was lucky enough to get to be at the premiere that you guys had in London. And the fans were crazy. They were, there were so many fans. They'd been out waiting for so long. And now I feel like because we've been away from people so much, maybe some of those fan interactions have started coming back. Is there one that kind of stood out to you during that whole time, the press tour and everything? Brazil. Comic-Con in Brazil <laughs> was, I mean, for a moment, I felt a little like Beyonce when I walked out. <laughs> <laughs> the response from the crowd was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. Um, and everyone had warned me, listen, when you go out there for the panel, they're going to be lit. But there's no way to prepare for that experience. The vibrations, you know, mm -hmm. the, you literally can, you can feel it all in your skin. DC fans go hard and that is why we love them. Um, yeah. Talking about Brazil, I remember seeing the footage when Wonder Woman people had come out on the stage as well and people freaked out. I'm so excited for Wonder Woman 84 coming out later this year. Can you talk about, or are you excited about any of the new characters or have you checked out the trailer? What are some moments that really stuck out to you? I mean, my Wonder Woman moment is the fact that she signed one of my comic books. You know? uh, what? I love it. Definitely had a girl crush on her. Um, so, you know, I can't, I, I can't wait. I mean, that trailer, when that trailer dropped, I was screaming. I mean, just, I, I definitely know her and Patty have probably just taken it to a whole other level. Well, since everybody is at home and just staying safe and staying, you know, healthy as possible, um, what is something that you might want to say to the fans? You know, I just want to encourage everyone. I think right now um, we have... We, yes, obviously we have so much that everyone's going through. And, and so for me, breathing and meditating and just kind of taking moments, taking a bath, like just finding things that make your heart sing, you know, find things that really bring you joy, bring you peace. Um, I've made a whole list of things. And what was funny is hard to make that list at first. And that's sad. <laughs> I mean, because I'm so used to working and going, going, going. And, um, you know, I think, I think we'll all come out of this much stronger. And I just, I just pray that, you know, we, we stay encouraged in this time. Thank you so much for joining us today, Journey. You rule and we love you so much. We can't wait to see what you do next. 
Thanks for having me. Congratulations on your 400th episode. Thank you. Yay. We're all celebrating from our couches. You I guys might all cut my hair to match yours to celebrate. <laughs> Do it, Tiff. I support that decision 100%. Yeah. Now it's mine. <laughs> and you guys at home, you all got to check out the Birds of Prey movie. It is so good. If you have not seen it already, you're going to love it. And it is out digitally, so no excuses. Next up, we have a special DC Daily trivia game with Clark Hector and Sam Levine. Go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, let's welcome friend of the show, also nemesis to Hector, Alex Jaffe. Yay. Hey, everybody. Yay. It's uh, terrific to be back. Happy 400 episodes. Uh, I can think of no better way to celebrate than to uh, test you all on how well you remember the previous 399. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing today. Today's trivia is all about DC Daily herself. We're happy that you could be here to make us feel stupid. <laughs> uh, that's my goal in life, really. <laughs> All right, so let's get the fun rolling with some trivia. Take it away. Uh, question number one. The very first episode of DC Daily launched with an exclusive clip revealing which character from Titans? Uh, Clark. Robin. I'm going to need you to be a little more specific. Dick Grayson. Uh, that's incorrect. Hector. Jason Todd Robin. Jason Todd was the Robin we're looking for. First <laughs> point to Hector. <laughs> Question number two. Skip right over to episode 20. Uh, Tiffany Smith hypes the release of Lego DC supervillains. Which hero does she voice in that video game? Hector. Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl is correct. Wow, Another point for Hector. Good job. Love you, Tiffany. Right I'm your real friend, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Tiffany fan here. Number three, what one-of-a-kind award did the DC Daily crew give to Marv Wolfman in episode 68, Aww. Hector? The Deathstroke Award for Lifetime Achievement in Comics. Yes, uh, the Golden Deathstroke Award is correct. I think that's also the award you get for uh, failing to kill the Teen Titans. <laughs> Question number four, what is the real name of Sam Levine's Elasta Girlfriend? No, oh, Sam! Clark! April Bowlby. April Bowlby's correct. That was a giveaway, Sam. No, Come that's on. not that's not true. I'm that's not in not I'm I'm not in love with April Bowlby. I'm in love with Rita. Um uh, <laughs> we'll go to the judges on that one. Question number five. Episode 69, Hector got to interview the great Marv Wolfman. According to Marv, how long did he originally believe New Teen Titans would last? Hector, you interviewed him. You better know Hector? this. Uh, six issues. That's correct. Exactly. Six Good issues. Job. Good job. <laughs> that was the quote. Uh, question number six. In the 2018 Halloween special, what was Sam Humphreys' costume? Ah! 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 Sam. I know. He was Harley Quinn. He was Harley Quinn. That's absolutely hey! correct. Okay. Do we need to make noise in order to get a, uh, attention here? Because Mark, I'm I was, following protocol. Listen, okay. I was only going to win one point at all, and that was it. Now it's between you and Hector. Uh -huh. Fair enough. Question number seven. Which Titan lent her voice to a comic book read-along in episode 103? Oh. Clark. It was uh, Connor Leslie. Connor Leslie, Donna Troy herself. And I was not in that episode, so I do watch this <laughs> show. Ha! There you go. Proven. <laughs> in episode 130, the panel discusses Batman the Drowned, which features a female dark multiverse Batman. What is the Drowned Bat's name? Hector? Captain Aquabat. That's incorrect. I am looking for a civilian name. I'll give you oh, oh, oh. Sam. Wait, I got, uh, can I guess? Yeah, you can guess. Is it Martha Wayne? It is not Martha Wayne. Uh, Why would you yeah. say that name? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's Bryce Wayne. The close. Oh, yeah. Bryce Isn't that Dallas, clever? I love Bryce that. Bryce Dallas Wayne, of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In episode 140 from WonderCon, DC Daily interviewed the talent behind Detective Comics 1000. In that issue, which villain was introduced to comics for the first time? Clark. Nope, nope, I take it back. <laughs> I think it's I the Arkham Knight. The, the Arkham Knight. The video game Batman Arkham Knight. Great. That's right, that's right. That's the one introduced in 1000. Question 10, in a President's Day special, Sam Humphreys quizzes you on the fictional presidents of the DC universe. But which real U.S. president was skipped over by the comics? What? Sam? 
Nixon? No, Nixon was in the comics. All right. Yeah, ever heard of Watchmen? Ever read oh, it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <Comics. laughs> Any other guesses? It's a real U.S. president who was not in the comics. Uh, Abraham Lincoln? Uh, well, <laughs> Are Abraham we not Lincoln going was, that far back? I don't know. No, we're know. not going that far back. We're, we, we're going to do well on this game the first the time either, Alex. I don't know if you watched that segment. <laughs> okay, uh, it was actually uh, George W. Bush because mm. President Luthor was elected instead. Okay. Wow. So they skipped over him. Uh, next question, number 11. How much turtle meat was in the toidal soup the DC Daily crew Clark, cooked Clark. Yes. Zero, it was vegan. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Clark, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we, you know what? If you gotta do that, you gotta do that. In episode 181, which friend of Hector's joins the couch for a discussion of the season finale of Doom Patrol? Friend of Hector? Oh, Clark. Well, it was the man who played Rex. Uh, yeah, I don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, Hector? That would be Flex Devin Mantello. Long. That's Flex right. Mentello, that's right. There yeah, yeah, you yeah. go, that's the point. Yes. Not Rex Mentello. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I was thinking of Rex Manning Day, different it's universe. Rex Mentello Day. <laughs> yeah. 13, another Hector question. In episode 334, who does Hector effusively describe as the artist of a generation? Sam? Prince, I was there and I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. <laughs> Incorrect, but uh, hmm. maybe accurate, Hector. <sighs> Jim Lee? No. Ooh. It was Phil Jimenez. That's why my, oh. my second guess. Oh, Phil's yeah. gonna kill me. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Which the Flash co-star was friends with Clark Wolf Clark. before snapping <laughs> off, Clark? Hartley Sawyer. <laughs> Hartley Sawyer, who is amazing as elongated he, man. One of my favorite a, parts of the show. He is a doll baby from heaven. Very yeah. sweet and very handsome. You don't see it very often. No. Episode He's so three, fast. Five, nine. You had my favorite guest on the show yet, Milestone's own Dennis Cohen. Oh, wow. According to Dennis, what was the hardest thing he ever had to do? Sam. Oh, his taxes. <laughs> Maybe, but that's mm. not what he admitted to. Clark. Oh. Clark. Be a parent. Be a father. <laughs> um, the hardest thing he had to do was the question comic that he worked on as oh, an artist. Very close. Uh, it was actually getting back into the current question series he's Fair, doing fair, now. fair. That's right. No points awarded. Fair enough. Question 16. The very next episode, episode 360, was the 2020 C2E2 special, where I hosted an exclusive trivia event for DC Universe subscribers, and where Hector and I last met. Off camera, I asked Hector a question about Batman Beyond. What was it? <laughs> Did you ask... What was the name of the high school again as a follow-up? No, I asked <sighs> you what the name of the robot was in the episode Terry's Friend Dates a Dates Robot. Dates a Robot, and I did Does not know. Does anyone know the answer to that? Man. <laughs> it was Cynthia. There Cynthia. Like, Cynthia. because she's synthetic. She's a synthetic. Exactly. In our current stay-at-home era of DC Daily, which bookend-mounted character protects Amy Dallin's comic books from falling over? Wow, great question. Hector. Death. No. <sighs> Sam? Wonder Woman? Nope. I'll allow Hector to answer for it. <laughs> Hector, would this, is like for, this is for a this is for a point for Clark. This is for a point for Clark. Yeah, Sandman? Like, Sandman is correct. Yes. Dream of the endless. You're very close. <laughs> point to Clark. I'm Thank so you. Thank you happened? very much. <laughs> do we need a tiebreaker now? We definitely do. Yes. Okay, I think we definitely need a tiebreaker. And I think this tiebreaker is worth 20,000 points. Okay, so whoever great, gets this great, one. Great. I'm ready, I'm ready. Episode 380 featured the panel discussion of the controversial Batman, A Death in the Family. In the actual final tally, what was the margin between votes for Robin to live or die? Closest without going over wins. Hector? 60. Sam? Um, I believe it was 90. Clark? Are we doing prices Right rules? We're doing Price is Right rules. 61. Clark is our winner. No! The margin was 72 votes. Clark. Congratulations, Clark. How dare you, Bob Barker me? How dare you do that? Clark is our trivia master for the day. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, but this will only last you for the 400th episode, so oh. tomorrow you'll have to uh, start be all challenged over. for the crown. Well, maybe when uh, maybe when we have our rematch, there will be some questions like, 
What did Clark do after she taped episode number 344? No, Alex, this yeah, is so good. Despite that, you still won. I so, mean, uh... that's how good I am. That's how good I am. I'll take it. No, this was, this was hilarious. This was so, so fun, Alex. Thank you. Oh, it's uh, a pleasure. Yeah, what a treat. You have a ridiculous memory. And now let's get back to the game. Clark, oh my God, you killed it. Well done. Dang, Clark. I'm just thrilled I got the one question. <laughs> and I'm just thrilled right, that up. Hector won a point for me. And yeah. arguably could have been the one that put me over the top. So oh, I definitely hope you feel good about it. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this has been so much fun. And for you at home, join us later for a special DC Daily cast live Q&A. Check it out <laughs> in the community events section in the community. We're ready to answer your most pressing questions. Yeah, make them personal and invasive. I can't wait. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, too, will answer personal questions about Sam Humphreys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer some of the questions for the fans right now. Yes, Sam Humphreys has tuna fish sandwiches every day for lunch. Just that is like slander, it. and I will not hear of it. <laughs> That's why he is the Patience Phillips of our group. Catwoman 2004. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, one last thing. We here at DC Daily love all of you at home. Stay safe. Read comics. The Hector way. And make sure you stay healthy. <laughs> Maybe binge Doom Patrol. And most importantly, we're all in this together. And here's to 400 more! more. more. <laughs> Goodbye, y'all. Yeah.